This episode of the Super Megacast is brought to you by Chime. Oh boy, ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited to talk to you about the Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. There are no annual fees, interest, or credit check to apply. Use it everywhere Visa Credit Cards are accepted. Get started at Chime.com slash super. That's Chime.com slash super. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank North America member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On-time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Looking sharp all wedding season long shouldn't be expensive. With a custom-fitted suit from Indochino, you'll create priceless memories without costing a fortune. Customize every detail on your suit, shirt, dinner jacket, and more in a range of colors from traditional black or gray to burgundy or olive to a classic Hemsworth navy. RSVP knowing you've got the perfect look all wedding season long from Indochino. Go to Indochino.com and use code SUPER to get 10% off any purchase of $399 or more. That's I N D O C H I N O dot com promo code super. Just an FYI, don't if I put a hat on or anything, don't put I have lice really bad. So just an FYI. Okay. Really bad lice. And I scabies. I saw something yeah. crawling through that. I have lice and scabies, and actually also bed bugs all at the same time. Isn't that crazy? Life finds a way yeah. to make you the most disgusting goddamn person on the planet, and it's no—it's through no fault of your own. It's just—it's it, just what it is. You also have fleas. Okay, well, I didn't want that—that's embarrassing. You know, I'd I, say fleas aren't as bad as bed blo- bed bugs. Bed <laughs> Look at me, dude. <laughs> Just slur, slurring my words together. I've only had lice once in my life. It's when I was a kid. Wait, like I, I don't. You've think... actually had lice. Yeah, dude. <laughs> a lot of a lot of kids got lice. Yeah. Went around my school. Dirty losers. Dude, I wasn't dirty at all. Then how'd you get lice? I guess I shared a hat with someone or something. My sister got it too. I probably got it from my fucking stupid sister. Runs in the family. Dirty Watson jeans. What the fuck, dude? Fucking attract bed bugs and fleas. No, we don't. My jeans are clean. And I don't mean that in like a, an ethnic, racial type of way. I mean just like I, I don't attract bugs. Maybe the cockroach is like a self-hate thing or something. Well, you, you made, I didn't even want to eat the cockroach. You, you made me eat the cockroach. I didn't even. I'm saying your hate for cockroaches. I, they just scare me. I think you find a lot of commonalities between you and a cockroach. And I'm that's st- why you're scared of it. Because it would force you to face yourself and how disgusting you are. I turn on the lights, I see one run out from under the fridge, and I think to myself... That's me, getting up in the middle of the night for a snack. That's that's me. Going into some Oreos. Next thing you know, you know, I I have to turn and I have to run because I don't want to face my true self. I'll have to bring this up in therapy. But one of the good things about a cockroach, which came in handy with Creator Clash, because we both won mm-hmm. our matches... They survive. They're indestructible. Mm-hmm. You can't kill them. Nope. Can't fucking kill them. You should have seen Nathan's face the moment, like, he punched you the first time and, like, you didn't move. Like, it was just like, Psh! you just stared at him and smiled. He knew it and was I went, over. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Future's now, old man. I'm, I'm like, surprised, like, even though they didn't mic you up, you could hear it through the whole stadium. It was pretty, it was pretty crazy. You know what? Say what you want about my fight. I'm proud of myself for not going down. With all them punches, I didn't go down. Sure, I stayed. Welcome my- to the Super Mega Cast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Another another fun little session of goofs and gaffs, and and maybe some improv, maybe some life talk, maybe some life hacks. You got any life hacks? Life hacks. Don't like your parents? If they're pissing you off. Just kill them. Uh, guess what, guys? You might notice if you're if you're a, if you're a video watcher, a video consumer, you might notice something. What is it? Uh, what is it that you see? Uh, strain those beautiful little eyes you've got and tell me what you see. Now for the losers who only listen to the audio. Don't, don't Ryan. What? Make fun, don't what? make fun of them. No, I'm not. I'm not making fun of them. I'm just describing them. Okay. In accurate detail. Mm-hmm. The pathetic lose. I'm kidding. <laughs> if you you can't see it, you wonderful listeners, but we have before us finally been presented with our. Super Mega YouTube 1 million play button plaque thing. Yes, that is right, Ryan. Finally, after all of these years since 2016, the Funny Brothers Super Mega has finally gotten their 
golden 1 million subscriber plaque. And uh, we're very excited to hang it up in the Plex. And, uh, you know, we just we just wanted to we just wanted to stunt on y'all a little bit this episode. So, yeah, we actually didn't have anything to decorate the set with. And this came in the mail today. So we're like, why not? Pretty heavy. It is. It's real gold. You know, when you said something came in the mail today, I I was expecting something. I was not expecting Mm -hmm. this. You thought I was going to hit you with a D's nuts joke? I I did. Nope. D's nuts. I always forget. I'm sorry. (laughs) But yeah, man. I like canonically changing it. It's these nuts. (laughs) These nuts. Well, that's what Weldon that's what meant. He meant. That's, he meant these nuts. Yeah. He just happened to, because of the way his teeth are, he j- happened to say. Or he's just these saying nuts. it with a little sass. These nuts. He's putting a little. He's putting a little stank on it. Gotti. Putting a little zest on it. These LeBron nuts. James. That's a classic one. We don't. We don't ever talk about anymore. LeBron James. LeBron James. <laughs> LeBron James. LeBron James. That's a good one. That you know. I feel like in early Super Mega, we used to bust out the LeBron James all the time, and now it's. Uh, also, I don't want to give away too much, but let's just say if you're a fan of early Super Mega, let's just say later this year, you're going to be hit with a little blast from the past, a little nostalgia. And I won't go into more detail than that. But some of you are going to piss and shit your panties when you, when, you, when you find out what we've got up our sleeve. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, not a movie. Not not an album. This isn't even a project. No. It's just a it's just a, a thing that we will announce that will make you go, Oh my god and Yay! cry and you'll have mascara running down. I'm so happy to see you guys succeed. Not really. I think everyone should be happy for our success. Every person on earth. And I think I, I mean I think I think they are, you know? I think Biden should make it a law that if you're not happy with our success you or get- the success of any businessman. What is wrong with this mic? This mic arm, dude. It just wants to fucking just. This is goofy, man. I I'm getting so sick of these Try mic arms. Try bending it this way or no? I don't know. I'm I'm just gonna just leave it. Yeah, it's, that's, it's not it's not horrible. I don't, but I don't think it's gonna change much. It's frustrating to say the least. It's frustrating to say the least. So uh, so McGee. Yeah. Tell me. About. What do you think about all this UFO stuff? I have no idea. What do you? Is there something seen, new? You haven't seen the news? Mm-mm. Really? I'm in the dark on this one. Well, I guess so is most- Do I live under a rock? You know? Well, probably. What, what, what's going on? Tell me the news. Tell me the news. Justin and I have been very- extraterrestrial. Excited about this. Very, very high-level intelligence okay, official. tell me this. Is it evidence or is it hearsay? It's hearsay. Okay, go on. So you're probably not excited then? Go on. Well, it's just very, very high-ranking- Intelligence official, the Pentagon, came out, did an interview. And they have to go through a lot of psychological checks. And he blah, blah, blah. did an interview saying that the United States government has a research program that uh, recovers uh, crashed UFOs, and we have many of them in our possession for for decades. We we've, we've had these 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 alien crafts, and and to reverse engineer them. And uh, we've even inc- we 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 have the bodies of of the in- inhabitants, the non-human bodies, and it's a huge secret government program. And the crazy thing is, the Department of Defense cleared him for this interview, knowing what he was going to say. Either either the world is ready to know, or he's fucking he's fucking crazy. No one's gonna fucking listen to him. Who cares? When they say clear, does that mean like I'm gonna say this? Be like okay. Or does it mean like I'm gonna say this? All right, and make sure to say this as well. No, they 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 showed the letter on the on the news. It was like the Department of Defense. Uh, Justin, talk about the alien man. Talk about what? The the alien whistleblower man. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ju- Justin's been been following it as well. Ryan didn't know about this. Dude, Had no shit. clue. Dude, they're Shit. they're 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 slowly declassifying, dude. They're they're gonna let us know. This this is disclosure <clears throat> happening before our eyes. Now, he's not selling a book, is he? No, no. He's not about to sell a book. No, nope. he's not coming out with a book. No. Okay. Well, oh, I, I another mention thing I forgot to mention was he he recently testified this for hours in front of Congress in like a closed door hearing. And they're not gonna allow us to listen in. No, Congress has to release a report on UFOs in 2024, and this was like part of that. <sighs> He came out saying that Congress deserves to know because they're being kept in the dark. Still have to wait like a year. Yeah, it's going to be later in 2024. They're going to release all of it the, because they they put together a team in Congress that are supposed to get to the bottom of this whole UFO thing. I really think they've been 
kind of dripping things to us over the last year or two. And yeah. yesterday, Canada, Canadian officials went to the Pentagon for a briefing on UFO shit. They, I'm they, ready. They traveled here for a briefing specifically on UFOs. Show me the pictures. If if they're serious about this, they need to hire James Cameron. They need to hire Michael, some big Hollywood director. Michael Scott. To, like, get footage of, like, all this shit they have, and they need to create their own little government documentary. The government won't let them take pictures. Through. And how about this? You know, the government, well, the government's the one making the documentary. And then the government makes you pay to watch the documentary. All of that money goes towards fixing the roads. And maybe build, building some housing. And then we don't have to pay as much taxes because Wouldn't that be cool? they made so much money off the alien documentary. Yeah. That's smart. I all, I do feel like... Wouldn't that be a, a good turn of events, you think? I do think that would be a good turn of events. I would love to just see yeah. all the footage. Yeah. I think that... Uh, housing. I'm, I'm not a huge good fan adjusting. of housing. Uh, but I... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like they're, they've been slowly conditioning public to get them ready for I, I for bigger know. information like, it's it's the ufos are more normal now because uh all this sh shit with like the decommissioned military footage started happening like a year or two ago is when they started like making it a little more public and like, then they confirmed shit. that it was real and they don't know what they are they're like these things exist and we don't know what they are maybe i don't know it could just be a big old fucking scam but it's it's fun to pretend and God damn it, I will pretend. <clears throat> yeah, but how long can you just go be in tease like this? I want to see the I want to see some evidence. I want to see the video. I want to see B Joseph R. Brandon stepping out, like, from, from his fucking sleepy bedtime, going, oh, Taking off his aliens cap. are real, screaming into the mic, having a fucking conniption and a breakdown. He's having visions. You know what the Trump aliens said. have implanted visions into Joe Biden's dreams. He's gone insane. I want this shit to happen. My fellow corn pop. <laughs> <laughs> the aliens spoke to me in my dreams. <laughs> we I, we I have to a, let him in. I had a nightmare last night. It was so scary. <laughs> Goes on a press conference just to tell the press about his nightmare. They tell me if they try to crawl in bed with you, just let them. They're not going to do anything to you. Just fall back asleep. No hanky panky. The little they green ones, the little green boys. You know what Donald Trump said? Donald Trump goes... Oh boy, if you knew the things I knew about UFOs. Is that what he said? He did say that. But I just I don't even know if they're from space. That's the thing. Maybe maybe it's like some like some fourth dimension shit. I don't know. The thing is I it's think it's like, plausible. It sounds it sounds so cringe, but it's like Well, it, it's not fourth dimension shit if it's physically here and they're saying he has bodies and stuff. I think it's the Chinese. Could it could it, be. It could be. I think it's, it's the Chinese. Uh, could I be time travelers. Personally, and this is just my opinion. I don't think it's the Chinese. I don't think it's the Americans. I don't even think it's the North Koreans. You know who I think it is? Russians. No. Oh. Who? The Koreans. The Armenians. Oh. It's definitely the Armenians. Yeah. I think it could be the Armenians. And I think. Mm. Been... I don't know. If it was Armenians, when the they said that the UFOs are silent, and if it was Armenians, it would go. Really loud when they fly by. I've I've lived in Glendale. I can, I can say that. <laughs> I mean, woke me up many times at two a.m. when I needed sleep right mm -hmm. after a full night of recording and editing other people's content. So absolutely, that's what I'm about to go do right now. Hey, have fun, dude. Yep. Bye, Justin. Enjoy the, the UFO talk. Maybe. Uh, did you tell him about what you? Did yesterday? What did I do yesterday? Seriously? What the hell are you? No, what are you talking about? Did, did you? you were you finally able to rub one out? No, oh. not yet. Dude, he needs to. He deserves to know. What did I do yesterday, Justin? Get it out! Of, don't let him. He's trying to play dumb. How should I get it out of him? Just pressure him about it. Pressure. What are, what are you not telling me? It, it, he deserves to know. That's all I'm going to say. You know what you did. Last summer. Bad movie. <laughs> Justin's playing a prank on me. He's throwing a bit on me. He didn't have a bit himself, so he's trying to throw it on me. <sighs> How heavy is that bit? How heavy is that load? It's It's a lot of responsibility. You know, you know who else had a lot of responsibility? Spider Man. Yeah, Peter did you, Parker. Did you see the new Spider Man movie? <clears throat> Not yet. I want to really bad.
Yeah. Yep. Okay. It looks. I I like the first one. Did you saw the first one? Didn't you? No. You'd like it. I've heard. I've heard it's actually a really amazing movie. You'd like the art. Miles that Morales. Would be the biggest thing I think you'd take away from it. And they play Post Malone. Post Malone's in it. Is it the song Sunflower? Sunflower. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude! I can't. I, I'll see it now. Then knowing Post Malone's in it. <clears throat> well, he's he his voice is in it. Oh, Post Malone isn't in it. Unfortunately, he's not in the movie. No, it, they have uh, Haley Steinfeld. Who? The from the True Grit remake. I saw that in theaters. <clears throat> I did too. The with True my Grit dad remake. And my stepmom. The one with Jeff Bridges, Matt Damon, and uh, oh, Josh Brolin. Yeah, as well. I didn't really care for it too much. I also was just a kid, so I was like, I was going. <sighs> yeah, I, it was I, shot really well. It was like the di- like the actors were. Did a good job in their parts. Jeff Bridges with Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges is like his main role is just, I guess, old Southern man, and he pulls it off every time. He does. He does. Really fantastic stuff. Uh, no, I thought it was kind of boring. I was an Iron Man, dude. I'm the dude. Yeah. Okay. I was. I was like Jeff Bridges was the dude from The Big Lebowski, right? But I'm also. The bald guy in Iron Man, dude. He's an Iron Man? Yeah, I play Jebediah. I play the Iron Monger. I die at the end, Sound bro. Like Bam Margera. Come on, dude. Bam Margera. That's my best was... impression. Show me your impression. Of Jeff Bridges? No, it's Jeff Foxworthy. Yes, Jeff Bridges. I can do a Jeff Foxworthy. After. Okay. Jeff Bridges would be like. I mean, after the podcast. I want that one in private. But Jeff, okay. Jeff Bridges. I'm the dude, dude. I don't know. See? <laughs> it's, it's a tough one. Yours was good. Yours... Come on, dude. Yeah. You make him sound like you just did a fat whip. Because <laughs> he always sounds like he, he's fucking on talk. Just, you're all so funny. Like, you have to, like, really sounds like he attention. Sounds like he just did a big whippet of, of compressed <laughs> computer duster. <laughs> dude. I'm the dude. Jeff Bridges, more like Jeff Whippets. Okay, this, it was a stretch, but yeah, you right. see, you see where I was going with it. You, you could see where the the synapses in my brain connected on that one. Got a brand new shirt. Okay, whippets. We did whippets in that. We didn't actually do whippets. No, no we didn't. We, you shouldn't do whippets. Whippets are really bad for you. I think I saw someone doing whippets in a parking lot recently. I was just going on a walk. I was walking by a parking lot, and I smell, I smell something, and then I hear. Then there's, like, a group of people, like, just, like, probably college age, like, in a car. I didn't see what they had, but I heard the... Oh, yeah. They was doing whippets all right. <sighs> whippets are such a stupid thing to do. They, yeah. it, it, it's, it puts holes in your brain. Just and- anything where, like, you're snorting a chemical right? to do... I don't know. It's just something about it, like... I, maybe it's a mental thing, but it's, like, it's a direct line to your brain. Like, that's how I... Th- it's just, like, it's so close... All that damage is so cl- it's so near. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And whippets put holes in your brain, so don't do whippets. They're also very addictive. Don't, don't. Steve-O was addicted to whippets. Don't do whippets. Just any type of like inhalant. Inhalant. Yeah. Essentially. Bad. Bad for you. Anyway, we're gonna go to ads. Uh, so enjoy this little commercial break, and we'll be right back with all the juiciest uh, gossip on Baby Gronk. Put that middle finger down. I'll put, I'll put it down after the ad reads. Don't keep it up. I'm going to hold it up the whole time. No, you're not, dude. Yeah, That's a long time, dude. Watch. Okay. Have I done this bit before? I don't think so. If I have... <laughs> two middle fingers? Maybe one of each kind. Shit, <laughs> okay. All right, well... I mean, they're staying up until the end of the ad break. All right, guys. Well, what you have to say. After the ads, we'll have to... We'll see. Feel free to skip them if you want, but Am we'll I have doing, to... Okay. I could, I could maybe switch it up so aesthetically, like, this is doing yeah, that. that works. One. That works. All right, well, let's, we'll be we'll be back. We'll be right back. This episode of the Super Mega Cast is brought to you by Chime. Oh boy, ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited to talk to you about the Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. There are no annual fees, interest, or credit check to apply. Use it everywhere Visa Credit Cards are accepted. And you can build credit using your uh, your own money. With the Chime Checking Account, you can get paid up to two days earlier. With a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. Also, there's fee-free overdraft with SpotMe. Overdraft up to $200 without fees with SpotMe when you set up a qualifying direct deposit. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for SpotMe, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a purchase that exceeds your balance. With Chime, you can also ditch those monthly fees. Yep, that's right. 
No monthly fee, no minimum balance, or overdraft fees. You can easily send and receive money. Pay friends through Chime no matter what bank account they use and cash out your money fee free. That's what Matt and I do when we go out on our weekly universal trip. Now it's easier to pay each other when we owe one another for whether it's an odd czar bed or or a giant uh, donut from the Simpsons themed uh, thing. Start building your credit up. Open a Chime checking account with at least a $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash super. That's Chime dot com slash super the chime credit builder visa credit card is issued by stride bank north america member fdic chime checking account and 200 dollars qualifying direct deposit required to apply out of network atm withdrawal fees may apply on time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score late payment may negatively impact your credit score results may vary whether you're searching for the latest sneaker drop that iconic handbag a timeless watch or your next piece of classic jewelry ebay authenticators are there verifying every detail of your purchase yep We're talking every inch, stitch, tick, facet, and clasp that make the piece you're searching for worthy of your collection. eBay's authenticators are experts in their craft, true connoisseurs. And as leaders in their fields, they're making sure your items always arrive as authentic as your style. So go ahead, get that piece you've always wanted, and leave it up to the meticulous eyes of an eBay authenticator to make sure that watch movement is original, that glimmer is real gold, that rare sneaker is legit, or that handbag is really made of genuine leather and never get faked over again. In a world full of fakes, it's time to get real with eBay Authenticity Guarantee because everyone deserves real. Visit ebay.com for terms. Welcome back. Look at you. Yeah. And Still got those middle fingers down. up. I, I did do this bit before. You did? I just remembered it literally right before coming in. I think I flicked them off and said, you'll see me. I'll still be flicking you off in the uh, after hours. Damn. So now, I I mean, the people have gotten double dosings of the middle finger. And this was different. This was two middle fingers. Remember, I made that distinction over the fear of it being the same Plus shit. the last one, they all, they had to be a Patreon member to see it when, when it came back. So. And this one was free. They got it a bit a bit later, which is usually how like battle pass systems work. Right, right, right. So, you know, Mm. I'm proud of you for committing to that though. Yeah, squirt some of that in your mouth, man. Some of that water, hydrate. It's important to stay hydrated. Are you doing no water July this year? No. (sighs) Come on, dude. I love water too much. Don't be a party pooper. Seriously, are you are you gonna be a bad sport and not do no water July? Party pooper. Can you not say that anymore? It's not that you it's not that you can't say it anymore. It's that you shouldn't say it to your friend. It's fine. My friend who's not doing no water July. I like water. That's the whole point. And you need water for a lot of recipes to cook disgusting foods. No water July, man. It's supposed to teach you discipline and strength. I'm sure within your Justin yourself. needs a little water in his chili. Uh, I don't think so. You can make chili dry. You can make dry chili. You know? Justin would probably make great dry chili. Apparently he's making chili tonight. Uh, that's what I've heard. That's what I heard through the grapevine. Are grape you going to be getting chili tonight? If he's making it tonight, I, I will have chili tonight, yeah. I will have Justin's delicious chili. Okay. You know? A little bit of that a little bit of that J-Man's chili. It's so good. It is really good. I just... I, the, the sour cream, I, I wasn't a big proponent. Like, I didn't... I didn't eat much chili before Justin. And then... You, I think, mentioned sour cream. Oh, putting yeah. Putting it in it, and it's just fucking... Bro. I like enjoying it a little without, so I know exactly what the sour cream is adding every time. So I'm thankful for it. Oh, that's smart. But the chili on its own is still phenomenal. I'm not saying the sour cream makes the chili better if Justin Spies are listening. I'm just saying it's also good with sour cream, and I like finishing off my bowl by adding some sour cream. What I like to do is squirt a dollop of sour cream in there, and what I do is I, I don't mix it all together. I like mix it. You just you just no. I'll 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 take I'll, the big clump and I'll take a little. I'll take a, I'll take a little bit of sour cream on the spoon, and okay. then get a scoop of the chili. So then it, it, they're separated. They're two separate things, and then they mix together in my mouth, mm. and it's fucking delicious. I'll try that. I'll try that because at this first time. at first you just get that kind of cool sour cream and the chili, and then they come together, and it's beautiful. Also, I think it. It's just a mental thing. It looks gross when you mix it all together. It becomes like pink and I like that color, and especially it looks like a dip when you have like the. It does the, look the like chips. a dip. Just, I it mean, is, essentially, it, it it it. Are we just eating a dip? 
Chili, I mean, it's like the same thing as a dip, basically. Like, if he brought that and was like, this is my chili dip I made with some chips, and people were like... Mm. You could bring that as a dip to a party, 100 You could bring that in a bowl with chips and say, here's a dip, and people would go, okay. I don't know if Justin would... Do you think Justin would appreciate it being enjoyed as a dip, or do you think he would staunchly be like, you have to take it in a bowl, you have to eat it as chili? <sighs> or do you think he, however anyone wants to enjoy the chili? It's up to them. I think that's how it should be, but you know, Justin can be really strict about that. I tried to uh, drink it out of a cup, and he, he lost his marbles over that. Well, it's the perfect method of eating chili. It is. Just kind of like... It slides right down your throat. You, you fill up a cup, and you just kind of like open your mouth, like slack jaw a little bit, and just kind of, you know, tilt back and just kind of shake the cup a little bit and let it kind of just uh, waterfall and, and clumps into your mouth. You know, just... That's the best way to eat it. Then you don't even have to wash silverware afterwards. And Justin knows I love big meaty chunks in my chili. And you had it last time. There's always these big fucking ground beef chunks. I love it. Just going, maybe some beans, maybe some peppers and onions. Is he still using the goats for that? For the for the for the meat? The goats? No. Well, uh, he used the last one for the last like about last month. That's a shame, man. Those were cute. So goats. he's had to go. Start kind of. He's got to breed more goats now. Well, he hasn't had goats, and meat is meat, for the most part. Um, I don't know those go. Those goats looked a little diseased. I don't, I don't know. He didn't take very good care of them. They're very malnourished. I'm, yeah. Uh, regardless of how they passed, he did find a substitute. Thankfully, um, do you know what meat he's using now for his chili? Yeah. You know what it is. Hmm. Anyway, I can't wait to have myself a bowl. Yeah. I can't wait to have myself a big fat bowl of Justin's fucking chili. When you're eating it, you can't even, it's like not even in your fucking mind. Yeah, you don't, you don't really care what the meat is, the meat of choice. I, I mean, that's, you know, that's up to the chef. You know, I'm not, who am I to question the chef, yeah, right? Yeah, went to another country and went, what? You eat bugs? Ew! Actually, that's what I did. Actually, can we do that in our next Japan vlog? <laughs> they don't eat bugs in Japan. <laughs> huh? They don't eat bugs in Japan. Don't they have those little, uh, can't you get them, uh, oh no, I'm thinking of, uh, They have that in, like, Thailand. Oh, Thailand, where they have, Which, like, little... I did that when I went to Thailand and I saw, uh, them selling bugs on the street. I went, you eat bugs? There's Gross! There's no scorpion on a stick in Japan? Not in Japan. <sighs> no, uh, that Japan doesn't like bugs? So that's Southeast Asia mainly, man. They, they, <sighs> they, they, they love those bugs. Those big, crunchy bugs. A scorpion was disgusting. It's not a, like, good bug to eat. There are good bugs to eat. Scorpion is not one of them. They it's, eat bugs in China? They probably eat bugs in China, yeah. I, I, I'm assuming so. How about Egypt? <sighs> we eat bugs I, in America. You eat bugs every day without realizing it. You drink orange juice, you're eating bugs. It's just allowed. They yeah. allow a certain level of bugs into orange juice. A and certain not just bugs. What? Rat poop. Not in orange juice. You're thinking that's in meat. Well, we we're talking about in general in food, right? Yeah. They let, uh, isn't that you gross, brought up guys? orange juice specifically. Isn't that gross? What? They let, uh, in, in meat in America, a certain percentage of rat poop is allowed. A certain percentage. They because they, they can't it's keep it out. It's such a small percentage where it, it's not like a big turd gets put into your patty, you know, like a, like one singular even pebble of rat. It's like, with the amount of meat they're churning, you know? Dude, like, the 1920s meat industry was a different beast. And have you ever learned about, like, did you remember in high school learning about the meat industry in the 20s? How or fucking like, disgusting it was? Was it, what? I don't know if this is just a horror story. Why do I have, I have some recollection of, uh, like a worker or something mm -hmm. falling and like, they still like, he fell into the grinder, lighting, like green lighting the meat to go out or not. Or yeah. Uh, a worker fell into the grinder, got turned into meat with the rest of the meat and it still just went out. <sighs> also, uh, they were like, like back then the meat would spoil and they would just hose the mold off of the meat and stuff and still grind it and use it. Like, oh, and the fucking, the pink, you know about the, the pink, uh, oh, I know a lot about the pink, Matt. Oh, okay, well, I know you know a lot about the pink rhyme, but I'm talking about a different type of pink right now. I'm talking about the pink, uh, fuck, pink goop? What, what's it called? 
it's in the meat industry. Uh, it's fucking gross. And I wish I had <coughs> the ne- pink sauce. No, it's not the pink sauce. It's something I wish I had never learned about. Uh, pink slime. Yeah, pink slime. Uh, Isn't that what they make chicken nuggets out of? Or wasn't that a fib? Was that a fib? We're like, this is what your chicken nuggets are made out of. I'm not thinking of pink slime. I'm thinking of something else. There's something really gross where it's basically like the juices from the meat on the floor that they like recycle back into the meat or something. Delicious. I don't want to know about the meat industry. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan. I eat meat. And uh, honestly, does it make me an asshole if I just don't want to know? Uh, that's a, that's a big discussion. Like, I don't know, that's a, that's I'm part a, of the problem. It's, it's like the whole, it's not uh, like equated exactly, but. I feel like, cause if, I feel like you, if I knew. Would you go to, would you go to like SeaWorld today? No. Right. You know, so it's like you actively knowing that like harm is being done and then still like, of course, like throughout. Uh, just the way our society is built, you're doing that by just the nature of... It's like your bargaining chip to get in the... To, to capitalism, you know, America. That's just kind of how it is. I'm not just saying, like, shit sucks. Mm-hmm. But any form of consumption and consumerism is going to have some ill-fated abuse or uh, lack of... Uh, lack of foresight and proper judgment. Hence the saying, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. Mm -hmm. But, you know, then it's... Because I haven't looked too much into it. Um, I know that there's, like, a ton of abuses. Mm -hmm. There's the side of things where it's uh, better for the environment in terms of uh, just the the greenhouse gases. Um, Yeah. Cows be tooting. They be they be farting. They be farting up a storm. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, there's issues with the brutal confinement and slaughtering. Yeah, the of treatment animals of the animals from, is really poor. From chickens to cows to pigs, it's it's you know there's the whole reason why it's like oh they're free ranged is because there's a whole thing where chickens not a whole thing it still exists I'm, you know but like chickens just packed together just packed and there's so many problems that have developed apparently from that happening like Diseases disease being the main one I will, um, i'm excited once they get lab-grown meat a little more off the ground because like i know some people are really put off by it but if it's literally just like taking the cells and duplicating them mm-hmm. so it's like you it is the exact same meat that would come from like a cow but it's grown in a lab that's gonna be awesome because then it's like you can ethically consume meat i guess that yeah. would be like the 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 concept the idea and then you wouldn't have to worry about the environmental effects and but some people are really put off by the concept of lab grown meat because well I mean like just in the name it it puts me off a little bit just the like concept but when you think about it it's like oh that would be not, great not if bad, it just yeah. like it be it's like spy kids shit yeah like when they got that microwave I'm making give me a McDonald's little hamburger boom you know liberals want us all to eat bugs <laughs> yeah they do because it's a good protein source. I don't know. The the whole talk with animals, you know, you're talking about something that does feel like emotions strong because mm-hmm. they, they don't understand things. So like they're going to feel fear, happiness, sad, like they, right. they feel all these things at an exaggerated level because of their fight or flight response because they are an animal that is meant to be out in the wild. Um, so there's the there's that end of it. Um, but then again. You know, there's always, you got to think of the people that are making your clothing or your phones or Mm -hmm. computer parts and shit. Um, There's always, it seems to be a living being behind, as you were saying, there's no, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. There's always, or there seems to be, uh, at least used by a lot of corporations because it's easier and cheaper and it's just like, you don't, to not care about the individual it, like, if businesses could, because you have to think out of, about it from a business mindset, they don't care. They no. their, their whole purpose is to make money for like stockholders and shit like that. So, if 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 you see it happening, you're like I'm not surprised by it. 
Um, I, I, I don't know. It's just a big confusing. It's a big confusing conversation because it's just one part that leads to several other parts. And it's just like these these grand problems that there's not like a solution for. Um, there's movements, you know, there's just like there's political movements. There's there's movements to stop like the abuse and the of, of animals and to kind of shed light on what's going on in the meat industry, much like how people like created a whole documentary sharing the abuses uh, of like uh, it wasn't it was SeaWorld and there it was a it was a specific place. Uh, the documentary Blackfish mm -hmm. uh, was a big one for that. But it really only I only really see this stuff happening in like movements. People care about it for a little bit and nothing really ever right changes so much. When it's but hot. a movement can be big enough and look at like I see world attendance and all that shit. I I think is like down a significant amount. Yeah. And well, I mean, I guess I guess the solution, an ethical solution would be like you know, just to raise your own live stock and then, you know, eat that which is what we tried with the with the horses, but when we oh, so, when yeah. we told Justin to put them down with the shotgun, he just ended up severely maiming them. Well, we're um, not Joe Rogan. We can't own our own fucking farm in Los Angeles. Well, we had the horses and we tried that, but again, Justin only maimed them instead of putting them down. Yes. And he didn't finish the job and we thought that he had he had put the horses down. The next day we find out they're still kicking back there. Not even kit. Well, they were maimed severely, but they were still alive. And, you know, then we had to go finish the job. Thank you, Justin. Um, I don't know why he thought just firing just blindly into the stable would, you know, do it. But Little minx he is. Yeah, he's a little minx, all right. But, yeah, that's a, uh, I guess to wrap up that talk, God made meat and man's got to eat. Hey. You know? It says it in the Bible, Ryan. God put meat on this earth for man to to consume. I understand why people don't eat meat. I don't judge them for. Oh yeah, I get meat. it fully. But I, I also like I also <laughs> eat meat myself, and I take part in the consumption of meat and the enjoyment of it. And I am a, I love the taste of it. I love grilling I, it. I love meat. I, biting I, I down hate, into it. It's one of those things I I wish that I didn't enjoy so much, but I do. I really do. What percentage of of Americans eat meat? It's gotta be like ninety five. It's pretty probably pretty high, right? Yeah. Oh, definitely. That. Like I'd say around ninety five percent, like the same percentage of people who enjoy ad reads. Mm hmm. Yeah, I I'd say that's almost closer to one hundred percent of people enjoy ad reads. A ad reads. Looking sharp all wedding season long shouldn't be expensive. With a custom fitted suit with Indochino, you'll create priceless memories without costing a fortune. Customize every detail on your suit, shirt, dinner jacket, and more in a range of colors from a traditional black or gray to burgundy or olive to a classic Hemsworth navy. Every suit is made to your exact measurements and you can customize every detail. Create a suit that fits you and your style perfectly with options for fabrics, lapel shape, custom monograms, statement linings, and more. They also have tuxedos starting at $579. Gadzooks! Why rent when you could buy a custom tux you can wear for years to come? Indochino also offers completely custom fitted shirts, casual wear, and more. Get a superior wardrobe personalized to your style and taste without the luxury price tag. They're always adding new pieces and options so you can stay on trend and in style. Explore their relaxed yet refined approach to spring suits with their new spring fabrics. I know I'm always looking baller at the parties. I always got my Indochino suit on and, you know, it looks like the most expensive suit at the party, but I promise I saved the most money by going with Indochino. And I looked the best, too. RSVP knowing you've got the perfect look all wedding season long from Indochino. Go to Indochino.com and use code SUPER to get 10% off any purchase of $399 or more. That's Indochino. I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O dot com. Promo code SUPER. Even if you're not going on vacation, summer's all about a vacation state of mind. Whether I want to listen to a song or a podcast on repeat or just need a retreat inside my own head for a bit, I love creating my own summer soundtrack by popping in my Raycon wireless earbuds. There's so much going on all summer. Sometimes... You need some upbeat music to pump you up before you see people or stay calm with some guided meditation. Let me tell you right now, Raycons are the best way to listen. Use earbud tap functions to toggle between three customizable sound profiles, noise isolation, and awareness mode. Raycons have a 32-hour battery life. 
including eight hours of playtime so you can listen to what you want, when you want, for a really long time. They also come with gel tips for the most comfortable in-ear fit. They start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. And Raycons comes with a 45-day happiness guarantee, so you really can't lose. I know I'm listening to Shania Twain every day on my Raycons, and I love it so much. Me, Ryan McGee of Super Mega. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon. Right now, Super Mega Cast listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash supermega. That's buyraycon.com slash supermega to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash supermega. Lazy. Uh, lady. Uh, fuck. Nice, dude. Nice. Why don't you try again? I'm, 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 I'm going to. I'm going to get it right. times the charm, dude. It's, come on. Just have some faith. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. Matt is playing Pokemon Go and he's trying to catch a Krabby. Will he do it? Through a curveball? This is. Did you. You threw a curveball? One, two, two jiggles, three. Boom. Oh, I got gotcha. it. Got okay. the Krabby. Krabby Matt, was caught. Congratulations. We uh, we are also uh, about to experience another community day. I don't know where I'll be. Um, it's this Saturday. It's like a dragon Pokemon. Axe you or whatever. Axe you. Is it is it a, is it a gorgeous, beautiful dragon Pokemon? Is it a cool Pokemon, or is it like a? Eh. I, for for me, it's eh. that binacle or whatever they're doing. That one too. I'm not a. That one's fucking creepy. They, they, yeah. Why would they do that one? I just I wish they would. Uh, you know, because I think for Go Fest or whatever the fuck that is, it's it's like they're going to introduce certain other Pokemon shinies that aren't in the game. <gasps> Ooh, Meryl may, I, being one of them. What color? What sh- what color is a shiny Meryl? Gold. Ooh, maybe. Okay, okay. Maybe. Let me look it up. I don't know. Yeah. I'm I, about to look it up, ladies and gentlemen. I shiny. got a shiny Azelf yesterday. You did. I know. That was, I was insane. I freaked out with you. I, I, I was freaking out because they also apparently oh, like the Meryl's, chances. Meryl's green. Oh, okay. Still cool. Still cool. I love green. Green's a great but color. I, I thought the evolved form. Tra- oh, never mind. It's the, uh, yeah. The uh, evolved form of Meryl turns yellow. Oh, okay. I do like green Meryl. And baby, green Meryl looks cool. Baby. Baby green little Meryl person? Baby Yoda? Baby Gronk? <laughs> baby Gronk. God. What is Baby Gronk up to? Mm, and he got rizzed up by Livy. He's baby the new Gronk? Drip King. By the time this podcast comes out, that means that it's going to be so long dead. Guys, right now, what is hot in the news is Baby Gronk getting rizzed up by Livy. All right? To play for LSU. Stole Livy from the Drip King. Okay? And now, Baby Diggs is challenging Baby Gronk to a 1v1. Huge news. Big things Big. happening. Big things are always happening for baby Gronk. Big seems. things happening. He's in fourth grade. Isn't that nuts? Why? What the fuck? Dude, he's the new Drip King. Livy just convinced baby Gronk to commit to LSU. Baby Gronk is the number one college football prospect in the country. He averages three. Is, who is Hoopify? I don't know. Everyone knows him now. Henry De Tallo. The way he just stares soullessly into the camera. He's a seven, but he's from Canada. Canada's fine. Seven. He's an eight, but he's six feet. Ooh, give him a point. What is this? He's a seven, but he's an actor. It's just this guy's account. Oh, you found his actual Instagram? No, this is his uh, fucking TikTok. TikTok? Yeah. Hoopify? Hoopify. Okay. I don't know who this is. That's his mom. Okay. <laughs> it's actually, I don't know who this is. You click it. My, my mom. mom. <laughs> my mom th- tried to riz up baby Gronk and got arrested. I can't believe baby Gronk uh, stole Livy from the Drip King. It's all I thought about last night. Well, the Drip King is coming for baby Gronk's spot as the number one. He is. LSU is looking at baby Gronk right now. And Livy tried to, you know, because <sighs> Livy apparently has it in with LSU. She tried does. To get, tried to get Baby Gronk over to LSU by rizzing him up. But apparently, but listen to this, apparently Baby, Baby Gronk, Gronk cheated on Livy. What? And when I say cheated, I mean Baby Gronk was going and touring other schools, potentially. This this middle schooler? Fourth grader. Fourth grader, sorry. This f- fourth grader? Mm-hmm. He toured other college, colleges, and he, so, you know, he might have told Livy that he committed to LSU to play football for them. Nope. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Seems like he's keeping his options open. TMZ was reporting yesterday on fucking Baby Gronk, and I was like, "The f- wait, what? Yeah, I sent it in our group chat. Well, he's, 
watch him be like the number one football star when we're like. He graduates high school in 2031. <laughs> so in 2032, he might be the biggest uh, football star. Hey, in well, we're in our 50s, dude. 40s. I don't know. Maybe Baby Gronk will be a huge national celebrity, like a household name. And well, and there is not just a flash in the pan. Gronk. He'll have to drop the Baby Gronk at some point, don't you think? Or he'll come back with like this kid who used to. It could be a fun little story. Maybe he won't even. He's a kid. He likes football right now and the attention that it comes with. But does he want to do football going into adulthood? I mean, he's also kind of being conditioned for it. He's having. He's good at football, apparently. He has a a lot of, regardless of his passion, which I'm sure he has a lot of fun and he has a lot of personal passion with it. He is still a child that, you know, a lot of adults are paying attention to. He could like, decide to be a lawyer. Like, what if he decides that's his passion? Is he wants to ba uh, start a baby Gronk law firm? You know, I'm saying he just might have trouble having some form of self independence because his whole life is kind of since. Imagine. Since elementary school, not just your parents, but other schools and outside forces actively, like, trying to map out your life. Yeah. That's creepy. Well, maybe he shouldn't be so damn good at football. True, true. You know? he, Look, he averages 20 touchdowns a game. Good, and I'm sure his, uh, after every touchdown, you know, his, uh, his parents give him a little treat. They throw him a little bacon snack so he can go, mm, this is good. But you know, this is this this feels good. Baby Diggs is coming for his his spot as number one, though. Baby Diggs is <laughs> He's the same audio clip. I saw two things of Baby Diggs. He's like, Who's who the fuck are these people? No, there was someone else coming after Baby Gronk, dude. Okay, chill out. Where is it? Is it yeah? The two best football players in America have been up to lately. Let's take a look and see. Okay, so it looks like Baby Gronk is in Mizzou. Pretty fire. Troop's not the best though. Should have some eye black on. <laughs> I like that one. This is a this is a grown man grown with an man? Ash Wednesday cross on his cheek. No, <laughs> that's Ash Wednesday cross, right? Why on his that, cheek and not his forehead? Isn't it usually on your forehead? That's sacrilege. I, I love a grown man commenting on a fourth grader's drip. Hanging out with the most famous girl on the internet, Livy Dunn. Hey, lately he's been invited to sit courtside for NBA games, sitting next to Hall of Famers. Look how. Do you really want one v one me? Yeah, you can't shake me. On third down, Who the hell is? Who's Livy? Oh, wait. Is this it? This is another one. Ugh, this fucking office, like, services. It pisses me off. Livy Dunn's boyfriend, Baby Gronk, is the number one college football prospect in the country. But his number one spot was just challenged by his new enemy, Baby Diggs. It's a parade inside my city, yeah. Baby Diggs is an elite player who plays both wide receiver and quarterback. He's Shit. currently the number one football player in the class of 2030 in New York. <laughs> he also called out Baby Gronk to 1v1 him. Hey, bro, I'm about 1v1. Who do you think would win in a 1v1? Baby Gronk or Baby Diggs? All right, guys, what do Who you the think? fuck is this Hoopify dude, man? He's creepy. He's our next, dude, he's... Baby Gronk? He's the next Walter Cronkite. Do you think Baby Gronk has it in him to riz up Livy? After Diggs just had beef with him, Baby Gronk has a lot on his plate. He does, dude. So I don't want to hear shit. Baby Gronk has a lot right now going on, all right? God love Baby Gronk. Love him, man. He is, uh, we're probably never going to hear his name again uh, a week from now. Could become a millionaire. He could. You know, uh, Baby Gronk, uh... I'm not, but by the time this podcast comes out, people might have already forgotten who the fuck Baby Gronk is. Or he might have been accelerated into the spotlight even more so. He might he might have had a trip to the White House and got to meet Biden. People aren't going to forget who Baby Gronk is, dude. What about Livy? Yeah. Yeah. Liv Liv the most a, famous girl in America? What Liv the fuck does Liv that mean? Livy's a flash in the p fucking pan. Yeah, brother. she is. Compared to Baby Gronk and Diggs? Baby Diggs, Diggs, Baby dude. Diggs? Baby, baby Diggs, Diggs ain't going baby, nowhere, baby. Is it Baby Diggs? Baby Diggs with two Gs. Baby Diggs and Baby Gronk. You know, a lot of people have been talking, I've been listening to the radio, a lot of people are talking about the 2024 election. You know, a lot of people are talking about, I've been listening to the radio a lot lately, and a lot of people are talking about this. Frankly, Baby Gronk. Frankly, Baby Gronk and Baby Diggs. It's heating up. The feud between the two, it's heating up, and we don't know who is going to be number one. Class of 2030 New York, Baby Gronk. You know, Baby Gronk is a good prospect, but... 
maybe, I don't know, maybe you could be my boyfriend in 20 years. Who knows? <laughs> You'll have to call me when he's 18. Maybe Baby Gronk could be my boyfriend. Who knows? Be lucky cute. to be my boyfriend one day. And if, for those of you who are like, you can't do that, Trump said that to a little girl. So that's, <laughs> so, that so, is, we're just flipping it about Baby Gronk. A um, lot of people are talking about the great Baby Gronk. The, the great infamous Baby Gronk. Baby Gronk. Riz Dub Livy. Did you hear this, folks? See, Riz Dub Livy. I, I wish the, he would start saying this shit in rallies. They're saying they're saying he's the new Drip King. They're saying they're they're, they're telling me they're saying. Did you hear people? Oh. He's the new Drip King, folks. They'd get him on. Oh, dude. Frankly, I think he's the new Drip King. Baby Gronk. Baby Diggs doesn't have it in him. Baby Diggs does not have it in him. It's a good impression. Thank you. But Baby Diggs doesn't have it in him. I can tell. Plus. He's coming after Baby Gronk. He challenges him to him. Well, he just said it in the video. It's a it's a party in my city. Parade. It's a parade in my, in my city. Which I believe is a reference to a rap song. Uh you know, I'm I'm just getting out of touch with these with these what rap song? I, I don't know. I can look it up real quick so we so we we know, you know. And uh and, and I and our viewers will know too. It's a parade inside my city. Fresh Prince of Utah, song by Young Boy Never Broke Again. The name of the artist is Young Boy Never Broke Again. Mm -hmm. Young Boy, one word. Capital Y, capital B. And then is Never Broke Again his last name, all one word? Uh, no, it's three separate words. He's got three last names. Young Boy Never, Never Broke, broke again. again. What's Lil Xan up to? He passed away. No, he didn't. Yeah, he he overdosed on hot Cheetos. No, he didn't. <laughs> yes, he did. Dude, he's he's fried. His brain is fried. <laughs> That's what Xanax, extensive Xanax use will do. It makes it into a big dummy. Wasn't he dating a Cyrus, her like Miley Cyrus's sister or something? Yeah, I think he was. My Miley Cyrus's little sister. And he was like going around like he he was stunting. He was he was buying a lot of fancy things off of I guess Melrose. That's where I you saw know, him. He was stunting. Well, I know this because you saw him. On Melrose, just standing on the sidewalk. And he was like, he couldn't really form a word. He was like, uh, yeah. He's probably on Xanax. Which, if you're abusing, you should look into not doing that. Or look into combining it with alcohol. Okay, there's that too. It's, an even, it's, an even, it's even better than Xanax by itself. And Matt would know. Yeah, take Xanax. He's a fan of alcohol. alcohol. And Xanax. That's right. And a lot of other drugs, but uh, the list is long and, and cumbersome to get through. My routine is is now uh, I pop three bars when I get home and I drink about a half a fifth of vodka together. It's it's great, healthy routine. And then you go, ah, sorry, I just got a headache this morning for some reason. Can't mm -hmm. come in. And I go, he had another bender, didn't he? Having those three bottle of vodkas a night. Hey, hey, look, you're... I'm down to two a night now. Matt, you're not 24 anymore, you know? You're not your 24 spry self. I know. I'm 27. Hangovers do hit a whole lot harder now, though, compared to early 20s. God damn, they hit harder. They just last longer. Wish I knew what it was like. I know, you You are lucky enough to not get hangovers, no matter how much you drink. It's, what it's, is that about? It's just your genetics. It's fucking... It's ridiculous, dude. You have an incredible gene. Because you've been with me when I've drinking a lot. I've been with you the drunkest you've ever been, mm -hmm. probably. And and like... And I promise it's not me going, nope, I've never been hungover. I just wake up and I'm dehydrated. I feel bad, but I don't have like an intense hang, you know. Oh my God. A headache or... They make me want to die, like how bad they, they are for me. Like hangovers will will wreck my whole day. And, and it's like a, my head hurts. I'm nauseous. I'm tired. I'm anxious. I'm depressed. It's just, it's, it's just not worth it. Well, they made a fucking trilogy out of it, so I'd imagine <laughs> the experience is oh, yeah. biblical. Luke was came into the office hungover today. He came in, he was all red in the face, and I said, what's wrong, Luke? And he said, I'm hungover. And I said, Luke's hungover? Mm hmm Him and Jim went to a comedy show last night. And got wasted. They got... Uh, Knowing Jim, Jim pressured Luke into drinking. Well, Luke didn't even want to drink last night, and Jim forced him to drink. He said, "If you're if you're my friend and you love me, you'll drink." And he made Luke drink an entire bottle. It's not of wine. fun if I'm the only one drinking, silly. 
That's just me- my meanwhile, J- Jim's on his third bottle of wine, so he made Luke do the same thing. Yeah, he's getting a uh slizzard or sli- What's the fucking in slizzard? like a G six? I'm getting nice, getting. They, they 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 have a they have a term for getting crunk, but it it's, it starts with an S L. You know what I'm talking like about? A G6, like, like a G six, like a G six, like a like a G. That 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 adequately covers covers it though. Yeah, <laughs> sounds pretty good. We should get a G six. It's a private jet. Really? Mm-hmm. That's what that is. Mm-hmm. I always thought it was like a mech, or like a a really nice station wagon. I thought it was a station wagon, and then uh, it turns out I looked it up. It's a it's a private jet. So when they're saying like a G six, they're saying. When did you look this up and figure out? Long that? time ago. Okay. But it's a uh, it it just means you know you're like a private jet. With mm-hmm. how classy you are, right? How fancy. Wake up in the morning feeling like, like P. Diddy. Diddy. And P. Diddy is, uh, I guess, he's big in the music scene, you know? Oh, very. He, yeah. uh, he's known for partying. Yeah, he is. So waking up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy in this Kesha song is referring, I'm guessing, to drinking and smoking and just, you know, feeling like a mess, right? Yeah, but um, she, you know, she turns that all around, brushing her teeth with a bottle of bottle of Jack. Or does she wake up feeling like P Diddy because she's she just has that big like she has a big she might, ego. She's she scared. might be saying she's a baller. She's you know? a baller. Wake up in the morning feeling like P Diddy. I got my glasses. I'm out the door, about to hit this city. Before I leave, though, brush my teeth with a bottle, bottle of Jack. Because when, because I when leave I, before, before the, the night. night I ain't coming back. That doesn't make back. sense. When I leave before the night, I ain't coming back. When I leave for the, the night, night, I ain't, ain't coming, coming back. back. We're talking. Pedicures on our, our toes. toes. Something up close. my nose. Uh, no, I don't think there's anything taking my Taking off all my clothes. No, that's not it. Boys looking at my clothes. Do you remember that, dude? Do you whoa, remember whoa, whoa, whoa. that era of music was insane? That's when I was in this high school. I was in middle school, and that was just dude, wait, wait, wait. You want twenty thirteen might have been the worst year for for music of all time. Uh, do you want to see what the top the the that's t- the year you graduated, right? I graduated twenty fourteen. No, you're two years behind. I forget. For some reason, I had always thought of you as like one grade behind me or something. Dude, dude, do you want to hear the top <gasps> the top songs of twenty thirteen? I'll just read the top ten. I want to. I want to hear them. Tell me. Tell me. I'm interested. This was a, a probably the best year for music to ever exist. Number one was Thrift Shop by Macklemore and boom, Ryan Lewis. Boom, 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 Number two was boom, Blurred boom. Lines by Robin Thicke. Three Radioactive by Imagine Dragons. Four Harlem Shake. Five Can't Hold Us by Macklemore. Six Mirrors by Justin Timberlake. Seven Just Give Me a Reason by Pink and Nate Russ from Fun. Eight When I Was Your Man by Bruno Mars. Nine, Cruise by Florida Georgia Line featuring Nelly. And ten, Roar by Katy Perry. So, oh, but, oh. Cause you're gonna hear me roar. Number 20 was like Suit and Tie. So actually, you know, was a pretty good year for music. I can't wait till I get you on the floor good looking. Such a fucking, that song always makes me pop my little bussy. I'm so high. He doesn't say that. He doesn't do drugs. Justin Timberlake would never do drugs. And you're a slut. He doesn't say that either. And don't don't give me the, the nana nana boo boo bullshit. Now you just that I did. got my suit and tie, I'm a leave it out. Poop all on the floor tonight. No, it's not what he says in the song. I'ma show you a few things. Pointing at his poop on the ground. Show you a few things. Did you not see the music video? That's not what happens in the music video. <laughs> How blown away I would be if I watched the music video and, and he actually just like sprays shit on the dance floor and was like pointing to it, like showing people. I, I would I would my mind would be blown. Mind equals blown on that one. You know? What the f- Spilled coffee on the carpet, dude! <laughs> gotcha. You got us. <laughs> by spilling coffee on the shag carpet. Why would you do that? I was- Are you five years old? I'm just trying to goof around with my buddy. No, are you- are you five years my old? I'm five years old. Coming from the man who can't take care of himself on a daily basis. What are you talking about? Have to sleep in a crib so you don't roll out of bed and wake yourself up. Yeah, that that is not something I gave you permission to share on the podcast. That is not something to Luke cut that out. Sleeping in a crib for me is a personal <laughs> thing, and I don't want you to fucking bring that up. Not cool. Name one other adult that sleeps in a crib. What are you? 
you just I can't. Yeah, you, you need to you need to knock it off. Every person's different. You just knock it off. It's a big crib too. It's not like it's a baby's crib. It's an adult sized crib. I think. Yes, I had to have it custom made, but it's it's an adult sized crib. It's not a. You know, not baby by pure like, uh, just a literal sense. But. And also, having a having a mobile, also is not. It helps me sleep. I have narcolepsy. You like and insomnia. planets? I get it. I like space, and and it, and it it does help me get to sleep sometimes. It does. I don't have any type of weird fetish or anything, and it, and I don't want you to bring this up anymore. I did not give you permission to bring this up publicly in the first place, and Luke, this will get cut out. Let's find a place to bring it back in. You really soured my mood just now with that. Just take off the sides, and it's a bed. Shut up, you dude. <laughs> You wake up regardless. You don't, you, don't, you don't even have a problem falling out of the bed. I, I mean, that was your I don't excuse. want to talk about it, dude. Okay. My okay. crib usage is, is my my business. And I and if I recall correctly, last time you came over, last time uh, someone came over, they took a nap in the crib and seemed to enjoy it. I did. And I fucking had a hoot in your sandbox as well. Sandbox is fun. I don't see you complaining about that one. No, no. Or the tire swing. Tire swing's very fun. And all of this on the second story of your house. Mm-hmm. You know. I like the fake lawn you put in, so it's like you feel like you're kind of outside with the painted walls. Thank you, man. Thank you. But we got we to gotta find a way to bring it back in now. Oh. Uh, God is great. great. God is good. Let us thank him for, for our food. By his hands, we, we all, all are, are fed. fed. Give, Give us, Lord, our, our daily bread. bread. Amen. Amen. I love God, Jesus Christ, bread. Yeah, yeah. I say that. I say that every night before I go to bed, thanking God for my bread. I mean, you know, we saying? have so much of it. So much of it. So yeah. much bread. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's actually not true. But I mean, bread can get you a lot of things. At the end of the day, we are we are making bread. You know, and what we they... do spend bread every now and then. We do, we like we like spending some bread. We we're spending a lot of bread. On uh, something for Super Mega soon. Two things for Super Mega we're spending a lot of bread on. A lot of bread. And yeah. you know what I got to tell you? Something just to keep in mind, Ryan. It would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. What do you think about that? That's in the Bible. Say, that, say it again. It would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you get there's no there's there's no possibility where the camel exactly. That's the whole point. It's impossible for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. That's not true. How do you know? Okay. Uh, where do you think Tom Cruise is going to go when he dies? He gets his own fucking planet or something. Where do you think shit. Oppenheimer is right now? Was Oppenheimer rich? It would be very... Did the man who made the atomic bomb... Was he not rewarded for his... They probably gave him some money, but like not like a ton of money. They probably gave him like, oh, here's a paycheck. Here's a thousand bucks. Thanks for building the bomb. <laughs> Thanks for creating the, the monster of destruction. Well, we're all scared of each other now. Thank you for thank you for learning how to twist nature in the worst way possible to to kill humans and and all life on the planet. Thank you. I think about like I'm trying to see because I would love to talk to like a grandparent or someone who even was like a teenager around the time that happened. Be like, what was your fucking reaction to hearing the news? Because, like, it's a lot different learning about it in history class. Like, the gravity is still there. History is always, like, is uh, is, is is in ink. Right. It seems in that, you know, it is for that situation. But the I still feel like how that moment changing people's perception of, like, what's, oh, that's what's on, possible. That's on the what, table now. Yes. And then that, of course, started... You know, a whole bunch of other problems. The Cold War. Yep. 
Dude, I was thinking back, like, they were fucking paranoid during the Cold War that we were going to get nuked, like, by Russia. Like, yeah, it's over. Ha, we won. We're bigger and more powerful. Well, because we were the ones with the bombs. I don't think Americans were too concerned. But uh, not long after, the Soviets were like... There had to be some liberals that went, that's not good. There probably were a lot of people that were like, this isn't good. Well, I, I, I don't think a lot of people understood the magnitude of it because it wasn't like it was televised it was just they were they lied about it too in the newspapers they said that it was they just dropped it on a military base you know what was our uh what what were the i guess like america if if we had one what was our apology for um capturing and putting japanese uh people into internment camps obama sorry citizens Ob- japanese citizens obama apologized formally in like 2008 for the bombings what about the internment camp stuff i don't know about that did we do anything like did we send did we send them uh like a like, like an a edible statue arrangement? of liberty you know we should sorry we should you send know? them a statue of liberty like their own version like <laughs> yeah. y- y'all get one too we got to give them two well three because there's the two bombs, and we also... The internment camps, yeah. The, inter- the internment camp thing. Dude, but, like, the Cold War, like, they would just teach you in school. It's like, you, know, you got to get under your desk, because you could. we could just get nuked at any second. Like, living in that paranoia that, like, Russia or the Soviets... It's an were iron just kinda, giant. Duck and cover. Oh, yeah. You it just is. make yourself feel safe in the last moments, you know? Yeah, you're not going to survive that shit. Well, I don't it depends think on how far they away They weren't actually... The people that... Were teaching people that didn't actually believe it themselves. They were just like to create some sort of normalcy, right? Or did we actually think, hey, if there's something in between us and that explosion, how's that explosion going to get to us? Think well, I about guess, it. I guess it depends on how far away the bomb is. But like, I, I don't know. <laughs> if you're close enough to a nuclear explosion where you even have to get under a desk, I don't think you're going to survive. And if you do survive the explosion... The radiation's gonna get you down the line. Well, that's the scariest part of nuclear bombs. The iron that's true. That's true. You know what's crazy? He's, Dude, he's, he smiled at the end of that movie. You know he gave Hogarth cancer, right? He came from outer space. You know how radioactive he probably was. Uh, that's not when canonical. shit comes from outer space. It has to. It has to fucking decontaminate. He's just making from, stuff up. No, he, he was one hundred percent radioactive. No, and Hogarth was fucking all over him. You know, you know kind of alien him. metal he was. Or alien doesn't matter the material. It's going to be radioactive. Mm-hmm. Maybe it expels it. Maybe the aliens have a technology that made him. No, wait. He was made, but there there was this whole thing. I can't remember. There, they in the signature edition they added like this flashback dream sequence of like when he was on his planet. Or really? Some shit. Yeah. Not like him, the Iron Giant, waking up in bed going, <gasps> you know? <laughs> it's all a bad dream. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, like, it was just kind of like, when he starts to go a little crazy, it flashes a vision from his, I don't know, it's weird. From his home planet? Yeah. I mean, he's made to be a war machine. Not to be confused with Don Cheadle in Iron Man 2, mm-hmm. Iron Man 3. The Avengers Endgame. Right. Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Age of Ultron. No. Nope. Was it was he was he in Age of Ultron? I don't think so. You, Captain America Civil War. Yep. Love Don Cheadle as War Machine. Can't get enough of him in that role. And he was in Man, it's always a slam dunk when I see Ryan and Matt. Love you guys. Even if you're not going on vacation, summer's all about a vacation state of mind. Whether I want to listen to a song or a podcast on repeat or just need a retreat inside my own head for a bit, I love creating my own summer soundtrack by popping in my Raycon wireless earbuds. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon. Right now, Super Mega Cast listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash supermega. That's buyraycon.com slash supermega to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash Super mega. 
This episode of Super Mega Cast is brought to you by BetterHelp. Life is uncertain. You never know what tomorrow may bring, and sometimes that can be really stressful. I know that can be very stressful for me. And one of the ways I've uh, learned to deal with that is by going to therapy. Therapy has been an invaluable tool for me. Just learning how to be better prepared for the future, better understanding my emotions, etc., etc., and it makes me overall feel better mentally, and uh, it just makes me feel better all around. And what better way to try therapy than with BetterHelp? Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and if you need to, you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. I'm doing an ad read for BetterHelp, Ryan. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash SuperMega today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash SuperMega. Grab life by the horns and steer it in the right direction. That's not their catchphrase, but I did just come up with that. So, yeah, BetterHelp.